Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and & Sip and this is Paint and & Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Autumn Fox and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Merlot, so let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for materials today, I'm gonna to be using a Stretch and Pime 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. The colors are titanium white, green oxide, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, Mars black, fire red, burnt sienna, which I'll call rust, and I have a deep yellow. And of course you can switch those colors up, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and then I have three brushes. I have a, a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number six round brush, and I have a number one round brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And again, you could switch those up if you'd like. And if you're painting with me, you're gonna want a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below there's a video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that will help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact kit that I'm using from the brushes to the large canvas to the paint. So that's there for you. Um, and then there's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you could print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are sketching an outline of our fox. Um, I'm gonna be using my pencil and I'm just gonna guide you through making a couple of shapes and lines and dots and hopefully by the time we're done we've got something that resembles the shape of a fox. Um, I do wanna kind of forewarn you as we go through this process, um, the outline that we're gonna create is a series of shapes. So it's gonna look a little funky until we put paint on it. <laughs> but no, just trust me, I got this. Just follow where I'm putting my shapes and by the time we put the paint on, it'll look awesome. Just trust me. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a couple of dots and then we're gonna end up connecting those dots. So what I want you to visually do is kind of find the center of your canvas. So a good way to do this is you can work from the top of your canvas and then just kind of visually pick where the center point is. And then you can also do the same thing on the side, pick where your center is and just kind of move your fingers towards each other. And when they hit, that's gonna get you to about the center of your canvas. And you can make yourself a little bit of a mark. Then what I'm gonna do on the right hand side is I'm gonna make another mark about the same height that's about halfway between here and here. So you can visually kind of pick your halfway point, just come straight over and make yourself another mark. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two more dots. One of them is gonna be between these two and I'm gonna come down about halfway between that um, level and the bottom of my canvas, so somewhere about here. And I'm gonna do the same thing at the top. We're kind of just making four um, dots in almost like a diamond type shape. So I've got this, I'm gonna go about halfway and go up and make myself another dot somewhere in that vicinity. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make from this dot here, I'm gonna make myself a horizontal line that's about two inches wide. And then I'm gonna connect this corner to here and this corner to here. So something like that and something like that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a super long, tall triangle. So I'm gonna connect this dot to this corner and this dot to this corner. So I'm gonna take this and I, just, I like to keep my eye on the prize, which is the other mark that kind of helps me to get it, you know, pretty good. And if you stray, don't worry about it. We're just kind of sketching our lines here. So it's gonna be a really long triangle type shape. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little curved line underneath here. So it doesn't have to be super big, just a little, little kind of cute curved line in through there. I'm gonna come from the center, I'm gonna make a, a vertical line that's maybe about a quarter of an inch tall. And then I'm gonna make myself a circle on top of that. You probably know what the circle's for. We're making ourselves a little, a little button nose for our fox. So somewhere about here, we're gonna make ourselves a little button nose. You can keep it maybe about a quarter of an inch away from your triangle, maybe, you know, maybe yours is gonna be a little bigger or a little smaller than mine. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a couple of eyes. So we're just kind of making the shapes of the eyes. They're gonna be, the top part of them is gonna be about as tall as these corners right here. And the eye is gonna sit about halfway between both of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go make myself kind of like a little mark in through here and in through here. And then I'm gonna make a curved line that comes down like that, a curved line that comes down like that, and then I can extend this a little bit out to the right as well, and this a little bit to the left, and I'm curving it just a little bit. And now I'm gonna make myself uh, almost like an almond type shape underneath here. So something like that and something like that. And they don't have to be exactly the same size. If one of them is a little bit bigger than the other, that's all right, that, that's what happens. It, the face could be turned a little bit. Um, so don't worry if they're not exactly the same size. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to the top and I'm gonna make myself a slightly curved mark that is about two inches. So similar to this one, but maybe not so rounded. So I've got that. Now I've gotta kind of figure out where my ears are gonna go. We're gonna make our ears coming um, really high up. They go pretty high up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, from this marker, I'm gonna come about halfway between the top of my canvas and here. So somewhere about here, and then I need to travel to the right. So um, it's about, you know, if, if you were gonna just keep traveling like this, it's gonna be in that vicinity, maybe a little bit to the left. So somewhere about there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So if this is my marker, I'm just gonna kind of travel, travel to the left. And if I was to do a diagonal line from here, it's gonna be a little bit to the right just a touch, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch. That's gonna be the tips of my ears and the ears are kind of rounded. And again, they don't have to look exactly, one doesn't have to look exactly like the other one. So I'm gonna do this, the inside edge first. So the inside edge is just gonna kind of round itself in like, like this and I'm gonna bring it just past that head the top of the head area by maybe about an inch. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And again, they don't have to be exactly the same curve. It almost looks more natural if they're not. So, and I'm gonna bring it in about an inch. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over on the edges. I'm gonna, I need to curve my ear, you know, so I have a tip to it. And then I got I have to meet this area in through here. So again, doesn't have to be a super straight line. Again, if there's a little bit of a bend in it, it'll make it look a little bit more natural. So I've got to curve this little tip of this ear. And then again, I want to make it mat, meet that marker in through there. So I'm going to go something like this. Now we've got, we've got our ears in place. <laughs> what I am also gonna do, so I have a good gauge as to where the bottom of the ears go, I'm just gonna make myself a little bit of a mark there and a little bit of a mark there. Now what I'm gonna do is I have to make the side of the body. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come from about where the, the ear is, maybe you know, somewhere or somewhere between the eye and the ear. And this is gonna start my descent on, on the left side of the body. I want this to come a little bit to the left of the mouth. So I want my ending point to be somewhere about here. So here I go. And again, doesn't have to be super straight. It can even bump out a little bit if you want it to. If you want your fox to look a little on the, on the furrier side, you can certainly, bring it out a little bit, and then you can just kind of bring it back in, something like this. And if it doesn't um, have a perfect form right now, don't worry about it. You'll be able to adjust it with all kinds of fur and stuff later. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the right-hand side, um, but 
I also am going to have a back, so I don't really need to bring um, this as far down. I'm not going to bring it down to the bottom. I'm only going to bring it down to about the nose height. So wherever your nose height is, that's where we're going to kind of stop it. So I'm going to just bring this down somewhere about in through there. And now I'm just going to give it a curve and end up at the end or the edge of my canvas. So something like that. And that is going to be the outline of our fox. You can certainly adjust it as much as you need to, but we are going to be um, switching to the large brush after this step. So you can put your pencil down, grab your lar large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting our background. We're going to be using our big bristle brush and we're going to be painting this entire area. You can call it like the the forest, an out of focus forest or something. Um, I'm gonna be using brown, green, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna have mine a little bit darker on the edges. And then as it moves towards the fox, I'll be using more white so it gets lighter and lighter. So I'm gonna start with green, brown, and yellow on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna be applying my paint with a circular motion um, at times. I will just pick up brown. Sometimes I'll pick up just green. Sometimes I'll pick up just yellow. Sometimes I'll pick up just white, but I won't wash my brush. <laughs> so you can certainly um, have fun with however light or dark you want this, however green or brown you want it. Um, I'm going for a really nice kind of autumn forest kind of look where everything's, you know, maybe on that warmer side and it's just getting ready to turn into winter and you know I'm just gonna have fun I'm gonna reserve my reds and yellows and my bright yellows and reds for my leaves later but this is gonna give me a great backdrop for all of those fall colors to pop um, so I've got some nice darkness around the edges now I'm gonna be using more of my white and a little bit of yellow. And again, you could have this as vibrant or as subtle as you want. I just picked up a little yellow and green. So again, feel free to make it whatever tone you want. You can have some lighter spots or some more yellow spots or some more green spots. I'm just going for something that kind of resembles, again, like an out of focus type um, backdrop. And I am gonna go right up to my box. Even if I bump into it with my brush, that is totally cool because we're gonna be having a bunch of other, you know, the fur is gonna cover those edges. I'd rather have you touch the edge of the fox with your brush than to avoid it. So just know that that's totally cool. Um, I just would recommend continuing to use that circular type motion or something that resem something that's pretty consistent through the whole thing. So as you get towards the fox, you don't want it to look like you're just painting around the fox. So you do want to continue. You can put the paint on nice and wet and then just start moving it around so you don't have a strange outline around the fox. Um, and I'm just going to continue until I've got this fully painted and I'm just going to imagine myself kind of sneaking through the woods as I used to do a lot when I was a little kid. <laughs> um, and I, don't know, I never stumbled across a fox while I was in the woods, but I did stumble across a beautiful little red fox one time when I was in, uh, I was in uh, a garden area, like a nursery with a whole bunch of flowers and all of a sudden this little fox, he just came out and he was like, I'm here, I'm not scared of you. And so I actually got to sit up close to them. So that was really fun. So I do know that they're beautiful creatures up up close. They're really pretty small, at least this type. This is, um, we're painting a red fox, um, which are pretty small in person. Um, and they, you can find them in a lot of areas all over, all over the world, these little creatures live. So you probably have some in your backyard or in the woods near your house or wherever you live. So I'm just kind of finishing up here. And again, you can see I'm getting it, you know, lighter and softer as it goes in towards the fox. And then we're gonna be switching brushes to our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this background all nice and painted in, you can put this large brush away in your water cup or wherever you want and take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are putting in place our black details on the head. So I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm gonna use black paint only. So a couple of tips for you. If you want your brush to be pointy, um, what I recommend you do is when you put it in your paint, you can spin it on the side of your palette. Um, and if your paint is on the thicker side, you can add a touch of water to it to make it almost like an ink consistency. Um, but we don't need it super duper thin. This is just um, so you can have a little bit more control over it. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be painting your little nose black. So I'm just gonna kind of put, yeah, paint it black. There's no, no special trick here. And then while I'm here, I'm gonna just make this little line here and I'm gonna make my little mouth line and I'm not pushing hard. Um, and you can start to curve this if you want to. It doesn't have to be a super straight line. That was, we made it straight just so you can get the shape into place. Um, but as you come around towards the edge of it, you can certainly kick it up in that corner a little bit. And then I'm gonna go right up to my eyes and I am gonna bring this down in this little corner here. Make sure I've got that whole area painted and then I'm gonna bring a little bit down over there and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I gotta re-roll my brush so I have a nice pointy tip here and then I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side. Just bring it down into this little crevice. Make sure I've got that bottom part and we'll be putting more shadow in that like little inner corner, but right now that's, we're gonna just start it like this. And then again, if you do your lines too thick or you're like, oh no, what did I do? It's too big. Don't worry, when we start to put fur on it, you're, not, you're gonna be able to disguise anything that might have um, happened in a way you didn't want it to. So now I'm gonna put the dark part inside the ears. So what I'm really gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of make a couple of lines like this. And if you have, if your paint is, oh, if there's a lot of paint on your brush or on your um, canvas, just wipe your brush off on your paper towel because you want this to be a messy area. So I'm just gonna kind of rub it out into the edges of the ears so it's very, loose and not um, a clean line on the edges. So I'm just really rubbing it out. So it almost fades out into the rest of the ear. And again, it doesn't have to be any perfect shape. Now I'm gonna put the, this type of, um, Fox has this little kind of black cute outline to the exterior top of the ears. And again, I don't want it to be a super clean line. So I'm almost just um, dusting it or wisping it on here. So something like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side. Gonna reload my brush here. And again, your, your outline doesn't have to be perfect. This is an animal. They come in all different shapes and sizes, just, to, just like us little humans. You could also you know, put a little bit of a shadowy part in through there if you wanted to. If you wanna bring a couple of little shadows down here, you can do that as well. And then we are going to be, we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got these little black details on here, you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of the red body fur. <laughs> so what that's gonna include is, I'm gonna consider the body to be everything except for the face. And then there is a big area on the chest that's gonna have white fur. So we'll consider that the chest fur. So we're gonna have red fur along the edges of like the neck and then this big body area over here. So the colors that I'm gonna be using on this first layer are rust and brown. So I'm gonna use rust and brown on my brush at all times. Um, and I just continue to use both of those colors because this is gonna be almost like the dark under layer that's gonna have a lot of dimension to it. So I'm gonna have some over in through here. Um, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go further than about halfway up the face. So I'm gonna just put a little bit in through here and then I'm just gonna creep it along the edge on this left-hand side. This other area is gonna be reserved for um, that the white fur that we're gonna put on in a minute. So I'm just gonna kind of put a little bit in through here and you can see part of it's more brown, part of it's more rust. What, you know, whatever happens, happens because 
this is going to be the undercoat, which is great. And so on the right hand side, I kind of want to mimic what I've done over here. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of a roadmap so I don't encroach too much into that white area. So I'm going to just kind of start in through here, give myself a little bit of a, like I said, a little bit of a roadmap coming down in through here and this will tell me okay this whole area in through here is going to be reserved for the um, the white fur so I'm just reloading my brush and I'm going to put a little bit of fur in through here and I like to when I'm doing fur on animals always keep my brush moving in the direction that I feel the fur is growing so on this particular animal the fur is going to be on the sides of the face, it kind of grows out like this. I think I need a little, little more over here. Miss this little sliver over here. Um, so you can see I am not painting it 100% um, because we're going to be doing another full layer on top of this. So if you don't get it 100% during this layer, it's all right. We um, the the future layers are going to make it even more special. So, and they'll, they'll fill in all of these little gaps. So I think that the fur on the back or on the side is going to be going in this direction. So that's where I'm going to be doing my brush. And I know that it's going to kind of transition from coming down and then over. So multiple layers when we do the, um, next layer or two on it is going to also help with the direction of the fur. The first layer always looks a little clunky and you know you don't have all your fur going in the in the correct direction but by layering fur like this it's okay when some of it's not in exactly the correct direction that going to um, allow this to look like it's longer fur. So that's why I'm al allowing my brush to kind of be a little chaotic on this particular um, step. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step, but I'm going to wash it and dry it in between. So you can just get ready for that. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of this chest fur. So I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm going to be pre-mixing myself a warm gray color, like a medium gray color. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using some of my white and I'm going to add a touch of black and a touch of brown into it. Um, this is going to be the shadowy area underneath my white chest fur. So I'm just kind of mixing this up here. You don't want it super duper dark, but you definitely want it dark enough um, to represent a shadow underneath the fox's face. So we have to have it at least, you know, on the, on the medium to dark or medium gray kind of side. So I'm gonna go somewhere in through here. If you need, you know, later, if you need to add a little bit more darkness under the chin, you can do that um, on an as needed kind of basis. But this is about as dark as I'm gonna go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint underneath my little mouth right here, something like this. And then I'm just gonna keep going in the same type of brush stroke that I was doing for here, um, we we are going to be adding a much um, brighter kind of layer on top of it later. But right now, this is all I really need to do for this under layer here. And again, if it looks streaky, that's even better. Um, if your paint is really, really solid, you could even use it with a little bit of white paint in it or a little bit of a lighter gray, just so you can have some light spots and some dark spots. But I am doing this on purpose. I don't need it to be a real solid color. And if you bump into some of your um, brown paint over there, that's okay too. That's just gonna make it look even more natural. And then I'm just gonna kinda keep working my way over to this left-hand side, making sure I've got uh, the whole side of the, the body represented here and the ch little chest fur kind of works its way up the side of the, the, I guess the side of the face. And then once we've got this done, we are gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of the red fur on the face and the ears, but not the nose. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are rust, brown, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna be using rust and brown in through here, but I'm gonna reserve a little bit of spot down at the bottom because this whole bottom muzzle area is white. So I'm gonna reserve a little bit of a spot down there. So I'll use rust and brown in through here and above the eyes, rust and brown. And then as I work my way up the head, that's where I'm gonna be using more of the yellow, rust brown and white. And I'm gonna be, again, doing it in little, I guess my brush isn't that clean. <laughs> I just marked my canvas. Um, that's all right. Uh, I'm gonna be doing it in the direction of the fur that I feel what direction it's going in. So I'm gonna start with rust and brown on my brush, and I'm gonna do these two areas and these two areas. And um, I'm gonna, again, kind of give myself a little bit of a roadmap so I don't go into where I want the white area to go. So I'm just gonna kind of, I know that I don't want it to go much farther than um, where the gray area or the white area is gonna be down on the um, body. So I'm just kind of giving myself a little uneven kind of arcing line in through there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, just a little kind of, I'm just kind of dotting it with the end of my brush. So something like this. And then I'm gonna use that rust and brown and just kind of paint this area in. You can see I'm kind of going down and out with my brush stroke. And it's okay if you bump into your eyes a little bit, no worries. We're gonna be, again, we've got a second layer to go on this whole thing. So if yours, um, if you bump into the eye or into the rest of the head, don't worry about it. We just wanna get a nice layer on here so we've got something to work with as we move forward um, through the painting. So again, rust and brown are the colors that I'm using. And because I don't, because I'm using them both at the same time, um, I am gonna have some areas that look a little bit more brown. I'm gonna have some areas that look a little bit more rust. And that's the beauty of this. We, you know, we want there to be some kind of inconsistency in um, this color because that's what fur does. It's got high spots and low spots and some areas that dip in and some areas that poof out and some that have a little bit more highlight on them. So getting there to be multiple tones and shades and stuff is gonna make it look a little bit more natural. So I wanna get a darker area above those eyes. So I'm gonna just use those colors in through here to get this whole kind of section above the eyes with the rust and the brown. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over on this left-hand side. And again, I'm just kind of flicking my brush. This is kind of in an upward and outward motion. And you could do all the way, you know, pretty far out here if you wanted to. Again, it's gonna look different. It can look different on either side. Now I'm going to, actually, I might put a little bit of this up and through here, the darker tone up and through here at the bottom of the ears too. So now that I've got that on there, now I'm just gonna start picking up my rust, little bit of yellow and a little bit of white, and I'm gonna continue in that motion of how I feel that the fur is growing. So for me, the fur on the fox is gonna kind of go up and out. And I'm not gonna paint the nose, but I am gonna start my fur in through here to start um, disguising that interior um, kind of triangle thing that we put on there. And while you're painting, you just think of what the shape is on that particular object. So I know the shape of the head goes up and back. So I can curve my lines on the, the side and go in the center kind of straight. And that's gonna give the illusion of it being kind of round. And again, you don't have to get it perfect. We are gonna put, you know, little fur details on it later too, but um, I just am picking up a little bit more of the yellow and white to get this a little bit brighter. I don't want it to go super duper yellow on me. Um, I still want it to be a little on the darker side because uh, if you start your fur on the darker side and build to the light as you're um, building the layers, it will have more dimension to it. So I am 
keeping it a little bit on the darker side right now. So when I do go to add those additional layers, you're really gonna get some good dimension. And I am gonna start going up into the ears too. I do know that I'm gonna have some lighter fur on the inside of the ears, so I'm not gonna cover too much of the ears, maybe just this little outside edge and start pulling in some pieces of fur. They have really long fur um, on their ears that protects I think, I'm sure it protects the inside of their ears somewhat. Um, I, I think that's what the purpose is, but I don't know my fox anatomy all too well. <laughs> but um, I do know that there is a little bit, some of, some of these foxes also have just white ears. I'm going for the fox with a little bit of the, um, the red in the ears too. So there's all different kinds of foxes out there. Um, the red fox does come in different kind of color variations, I think based on the season. Um, but I feel like I'm just about got this all covered here and we, are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your facial fur and your ear fur, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do our first layer for this whole nose muzzle area. I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm going to be using white, brown, rust, and maybe a little yellow if I have to, but predominantly white and brown. Um, so how I'm gonna do this, oh, and a little bit of my original gray too. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put in some lighter fur in through here, similar to this, only a little bit lighter. So what I'll do is I'm gonna use that gray plus white on my brush. So I've got my gray plus white, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of start coloring this in and making sure that the it almost overlaps the um, original gray just a little bit. Again, we're gonna put another layer later that's gonna make it lighter and brighter, um, but right now we're just kind of getting the original or the first coat on it. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over on this side. So I'm just gonna get a little bit overlapping here. And I'm not using a whole bunch of paint on my brush. You do wanna make sure that, you know, you use a lot enough to make a difference, but you don't have to use a, a ton of paint. And these little areas do um, coordinate with the face. They, they the, That fur kind of works itself into it. So as I'm in this area, I will just kind of pull those little light spots into the the rusty part a little bit so it overlaps. I'm gonna put this grayish kind of color underneath here on the little mouth, but I want it to be a little bit lighter than that original gray. So I have white with the original gray on my brush. And you can certainly, if your black line for the mouth is too prominent, just paint over it a little bit. You'll be able to see it underneath um, that gray. So. You can certainly do that. So what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna start working on this little face area. Um, I have not washed my brush and I still have that light, or the this gray plus white on there. I'm just kind of using the remnants right now around um, this nose area. So I just picked up a little bit more white so it wasn't so dark because I don't want it to be that dark. And I want this to kind of start to blend in with the upper area of the nose, but I don't need it to be a super clean line. So I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel and I'm just gonna kind of get it to blend in a little bit there. Now I'm gonna pick up white on my brush and get this area, I'm just gonna kind of dot it and get this whole area around the nose to be pretty darn light. It doesn't have to be white, 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 white right now um, because we are gonna be doing another layer, but you do want it to be a little bit lighter um, than the rest if you can right in this little front left and right area. So I'm just kind of dotting it. I'm not using any fancy 
brush stroke and even this little um, separation point in the middle if you just kind of dot your brush over it a little bit that's going to make it look a little bit more natural so i've got that covered now i got to work my way up the nose i didn't wash my brush i'm going to pick up a touch of brown and i'm going to start dotting i like to dot um, when there's short fur like this because it gives it a really nice kind of soft textural effect um, as I have multiple colors on my brush, this is gonna allow me to give it a little bit of a textural effect. I needed to kind of make sure, or blend in with here. So I am gonna use more brown on my brush, maybe a little brown and rust to dot in this area to make sure that they look like they belong together. So you can almost like overlap them a little bit just to soften that transition. And again, if it doesn't look perfect right now, don't worry about it because we'll, we've got plenty of, of time to make it look um, like it belongs together. So again, I picked up a little bit of rust and brown for this side. So I'm just gonna kind of dot it in through there. I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel to make sure that I don't have too much paint. And then I'm just gonna kind of lightly tap, tap, tap it. You can even come past this little part a little bit just to give it, again, that um, the shape and again I'm just kind of tapping this so it'll have a nice soft edge as it comes into the nose area and then I'm going to start getting darker up and through here so I'm going to use whatever colors I used up in the top so that's going to be brown rust and maybe a little bit of yellow and this kind of transitions from the short hair to the longer hair so I'm going to just tap 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 for a little bit um, and then once I get in through here, I can start to transition into that more uh, distinct brush stroke. And I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel to make sure that I don't have too much paint and just getting these to kind of blend in with one another for a little bit of extra, um, just a more gentle kind of transition. And then we are gonna be switching brushes to actually no we need one more layer on those ears so let's use the same brush for the next step but you're going to want to wash it and dry it in preparation for the next step all right so what we're going to do is we're going to finish our first layer on our furry ears <laughs> that was a tongue twister almost um so i'm going to be using my medium brush and i'm going to be using this gray white, maybe a little bit of brown too. And this is gonna be the exterior kind of fluffy layer. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of brown on my brush to get these little shadowy pieces in along, um, intermingled with the exterior part of the, of the ear. So I'm just kind of pulling a little bit of um, brown in through there. Maybe I've got a little bit of brown over here just to give a little bit more shape to this side of the ear. I'm gonna do the same thing over on the other ear. So I'm gonna put maybe a little bit of brown in through here. Definitely a little bit in through here. This brown using this first is gonna add additional kind of dimension to the, the fur. And then I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of the um, original gray with a little bit of white, not washing my brush. And I'm just gonna really start to kind of carefree like um, brush strokes from the outside and kind of pull it in a upward and inward um, way into that ear. And again, carefree, just don't think about it too hard. These are exterior pieces of fur that should get thinner as they cross over that black area. Um, a goal should be to hide that edge of the black area um, with these little pieces of fur. So just, you know, if, if you don't get it on the first layer, which I'm probably not going to, we're, I'm going to do, you know, uh, another layer to them later, but that's going to be my ultimate goal on these ears is to make sure that I've kind of disguised that entry point into the deep dark part of the ear. So again, I'm using the original gray with a little bit of white on my brush and I'm gonna get these lighter pieces to cross over into that gray or into the black area. And we'll be adding 
the extra lighter dimension later. And then after you've got this layer on here, we are gonna switch brushes to our tiny brush. So you can certainly do that. Let me just make sure I've got all areas here, which I believe I do now. All right, get ready for the next step with your small brush. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing the nose and the mouth. We're gonna be using our small brush and the colors that we're using are black, brown, and white. Um, and how I'm gonna do this is I am gonna start with a little bit of brown and just a touch of white on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna be creating a couple of little marks on my nose. So I'm gonna just make a horizontal line. It can be a little bit curved towards the top side of the nose, something like that. And then I'm gonna make two little um, arcing lines for the nostrils, one, two. And then I wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I rub that top line into the rest of the top of the nose. And if you feel like you've gone too much, you can always just pick up a little bit of black just to get it to blend in a little bit. Um, and you can get it as bright as you want or as subtle as you want. I think I'm gonna make mine just a touch brighter in through there just to give there a little bit more sunshine or a little bit more highlight on the nose. And then while I have that little bit of brown on my brush, I'm gonna just kind of make the edges around that nose a little bit more subtle so it's not a firm line from the black to the white. So I just am with the remnants on my brush just kind of rubbing it in. And then I'm gonna do the same thing down this little spot in the center. And if you make it go away too much, you can certainly add some back, um, add some of the black back. But then I'm gonna, on, on the mouth, the mouth you can, if, if you've got good shape on it, you can kind of leave it alone, but I don't want mine to look too distinct. So I'm gonna add a touch of brown to my brush and kind of get it to um, have a little bit of shape on these edges. The brown is translucent, um, so you can really use it as a nice shadowing kind of um, uh, effect. I just put a little bit of water on my brush to get the edges of that brown to, to blend in a little bit more with that fur around there. And if you wanted to, you can pick up a little bit of white. If you've made it go too dark, just pick up a little bit of white and just keep kind of adjusting it until you feel like you've got a good enough little transition. And then I'm gonna do the same thing at the um, on the bottom of the mouth, only I'm gonna make it a little bit more gray, so a little bit more darker gray. So I'm using a little bit of black and brown on my brush, and I'm just gonna kind of underline this. You can have it a little fluffy if you want to. I'm gonna add a touch of white in a second, but I'm picking up some of this darker gray now, and I'm just gonna get this to blend in a little bit and then I'll have a little bit of a lighter spot in the um, center of the bottom part of the mouth, I guess, is what you'd refer to it as. And I just want it to look natural. So I don't need it to be too too bright. This is would would probably be more in the shadow if the, if the head is down a little bit. So if you've got to darken up those little corners, you just kind of keep tweaking it until you feel like you've got enough dimension on it. And then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step, but you're definitely gonna to wanna to wash it and dry it before we go on to that step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the inside of the eyes. I'm gonna be using my small brush and the colors that I'm using are rust, yellow, and white. Um, and the biggest tip that I can give you on this step is don't use a lot of paint. <laughs> um, it, the less paint that you use, the more control that you're gonna have over this step. Um, but if you do use a lot of paint and it's very wet and you're having tough time controlling it, just step back for a minute, let it dry, and you can add to it after that. So how I'm gonna do this is I am putting a tiny bit of all three colors on my brush at the same time. So a little rust, a little yellow, and a really tiny bit of white. And just a teeny tiny bit, you can wipe your brush off on the side of your palette. 
Um, the reason I like to use a small amount is so it dries fast and I can adjust the color as much as I want. So um, these foxes from what I've seen have kind of a long, a long pupil part to their eye. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna kind of um, make a couple of arcing lines to outline that pupil. So something like that. And then I'm gonna use that color to make um, the rest of the eye. Oops, I need a little more white so you can actually see it. I'm so reserved when I'm putting the paint on here that I probably won't put enough paint on for you to even see. So I'm gonna bring it up into this corner like that and I'll bring it down into this left corner like this. And I'm on the lighter side right now, so that way when I go to, um, it's gonna dry and I'm gonna be able to adjust those colors and I'll add that more of the yellow and the rust onto it. Um, but because I'm using very little paint on this first pass, it's gonna dry really quickly so I can go back and adjust the colors. So I'm gonna do the same thing on here. They almost look like cat-like pupils to me because they're so, like long and skinny. I'm staying away from the edge of the eye, so I'm leaving a little bit of black on the top and the bottom and in the corners. And um, that again is gonna make it look nice and natural. So now that I've got kind of the shape on here, now I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up more of the rust and the yellow. And again, I'm just using a teeny tiny amount on my brush and I'm gonna do a little second layer on here and you'll see because I used such a nice light color on the first pass that you'll really start to be able to see these colors. And you might want yours more on the, on the rusty side, you might want yours more on the yellow side. Um, typically, the eye is gonna be a little bit darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. So if you wanna use more rust at the top and more yellow at the bottom, that'll make it look even more natural. So, you know, just kind of keep tweaking the colors until you feel like you've got them nice and accomplished. And then once you feel like you've got it as dark or as bright as you want, you can wash that little brush and we can put what I refer to as like the, the round hazy part on the eye. And I just washed and dried my brush a little bit and I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white and water on my brush at the same time. And I'm just gonna kind of like lightly almost rub it on top of that. The paint does have to kind of be dry underneath it a little bit to give you a little bit of like a haze. This is gonna show the roundness of the eye. And then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white to put the sparkle in the eye. So I've got my little haze and now I've got my little bit of a sparkle. And then we are gonna be switching brushes to our medium brush. So once you've got your beautiful eyes on here, you can wash and dry this, oh, wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing our second layer for the red body fur. So this time I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using brown and rust, which is what I used originally, but I'm also gonna be using yellow and white. So I'm gonna start with brown and rust and I'm just gonna start over here on the right hand side and I'm gonna really just kind of be using the same type of brush stroke that I was using um, on the first pass and as I get closer to the head that's when I'm gonna start using a little bit more of the um, yellow with the um, rust and white. So I'll probably back off on my um, brown a lot as I get towards this interior or closer to um, the head and I do want it to overlap um, this what's going to be the white area and again you can have yours as yellow or as golden or as 
chestnutty kind of color as you want to. It's totally up to you, but you can see how just adding these little bits of lighter fur on top of here are really adding a lot of dimension to it. Um, and then I'm going to do the areas around that face, make sure that I've got a good assembly over here where it's going to meet this other fur that we're going to put on in a few minutes here. But I want to make sure that I've got a, a full coat on here, no pun intended, but a little intended. <laughs> um, and then I am going to just make sure I've got back here is all nice and fluffy. And then I'm going to move up to the um, sides of the head, which I'm going to cons still consider part of the body. And I'm going to just make these a little bit lighter with the yellow and the white and the rust. And you can keep adding as much as you want. You can have it as fluffy as you want or as light as you want. Again, these animals come in so many different color variations, but you do definitely want to make sure that you, by the time you're done this step that you've hidden your pencil lines, which is what I'm attempting to do right now is get these little, I see little bits of my pencil marks showing through and you want to make sure that your entire um, surface is painted where we're doing this particular layer right now. Um, because this is in essence the, you know, the, the main coat. So we don't, we're not going to do much more to it. We might hide it a little bit with some leaves if we need to, but you definitely want to just make sure that you've got enough of it covered in through these areas, especially your um, your pencil mark. And you can see it's getting nice and light and I'm adding these bits of highlights with my white and my yellow, which is looking pretty darn fancy. Um, and then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this pretty layer of fur on your body, you can wash and dry this same brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our chest fur. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are black, gray, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna make sure that I have a nice um, firm kind of shadow underneath that uh, chin. So I'm gonna put black and my original gray on here. And I'm really just gonna kind of put a little line there and start pulling it down. So I have a couple of really kind of darker streaks in through here. Um, you could even bring it up the side a little bit if you didn't feel like you had a good enough definition um, from your face to your chest. And then once I've got that on there, now I'm gonna be using white to get my nice light fur to all fluff out in through here, especially on the left-hand side and um, a little bit on the right hand side where it's up high but down here you might find yourself wanting to use white with a little bit of your original gray um, and you can see i am leaving some of that um, gray showing my paint that i'm using this i use a um, a thinner student grade paint so it's pretty see-through and it allows for me to do these multiple layers on here which is great because I can add this nice textural dimension to it so I do like one layer and then I'll, I might come back with a couple of additional brighter pieces on top of it so you can really kind of find your rhythm with however thick or thin your paint is you might be able to um, do yours all in one fell swoop um, without doing multiple, multiple layers, but I love doing layers on fur, so this kind of paint really works out for me. And I just ran into some wet rust paint, which is great because that's gonna make it look even more natural. And then I'm just kind of, again, using my white and gray in through this darker area. And I'm just painting these strokes in the way that I feel that the fur is gonna be falling. So I feel it's gonna be falling, you know, kind of almost billowing out from underneath that chesty area. So I'm making sure that's the way that I am painting my brush strokes. Um, and then over in this area, it's got these great little um, pieces that kind of come up and flip out on, on the sides of his face. They kind of meet his face here a little bit, um, which we'll get more into the face in a minute, but I just kind of want to make sure that they 
Um, I had some kind of transition from one area to the other. And then I'm gonna just kind of keep on keeping on here, making sure that I keep a little bit of a dark area in through there so it does read as a little bit of a shadow. And again, if you need to add a little bit more black or a little bit more dark gray so you don't lose um, that definition, please feel free to do so. And then I'm just gonna make sure that I have enough fur to cover or to lay on top of this area over here because this fur is on the outside of that fur and it would lay on top of it. So that's why I've done this section, you know, after I did that one. So you can see um, the, in, in essence, the order of the fur. And then that looks pretty good. I think I might add a touch more white over here just so these two sections kind of look a little bit more like they belong together or they've transitioned from one to the next. And then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got all of this beautiful white fur on here and you've developed it as much as you want to, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing our second layer of the head fur. So this is not gonna include this little muzzle area and the nose. So it's gonna be all of this like rusty type area. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are rust, brown, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna use my medium brush. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have it a little bit darker in through here, a little darker above the eyes, and pretty darn dark underneath here. So I'm gonna start with rust and brown on my brush to just make sure that all of this area in through here is really nice and dark. Um, and again, I'm just kind of using a down and out kind of brush stroke. And we're gonna be putting all kinds of little highlights and little tiny details on in a little bit, but this is definitely um, making sure that this area is really nice and rich and has nice nice depth to it. Um, all the while, I do want to make sure that everything connects. So this has to connect to here, this has to connect to here. Um, they have to connect to the nose too, so when I'm near the nose, maybe I'm just doing a little bit more of the dotting. We'll hit the nose separately um, for its final final layer, um, but right now I'm just kind of getting this in, this nice dark layer in through here. Again, rust and brown. Make sure that I've got my nice second dark layer in through this area in through here and making sure it kind of reads as it is um, flowing into these little kind of cheek pieces in through here. So I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side so you can just kind of flick it in to make it into this little lighter area to make sure they look like they belong together. And then just kind of going in it right up to that eye and then making sure I've got this area nice and rich looking. And again, you can certainly use more rust or more brown, whatever you know color intensity is speaking to you. Feel free to, to get it to go in that direction. And then I'm gonna put this nice dark color above those eyes. Um, they do have this deep dark like pocket right in in through that corner of the eye. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got some nice dark rust and brown going in through that area. I think I'm gonna even darken this just a little bit more, make sure it looks like it's almost like shadowy in through there. We're gonna hit those eyes the um, little details around them one more time too, so you don't have to worry about making them perfect just yet, um, but if you can start getting these little shadows in through here, that, that works out just perfect. And again, I'm just making sure that I've got some nice darkness above them. And now, oh, I wanted a little bit of darkness up this center too, just to make sure that it, it reads the way that I want it to read. So just a little bit more of that rust and brown. And now I'm gonna start, I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm gonna start using the um, rust yellow and white to get that next almost like fluffy layer onto um, the rest of the head. So again, I'm still just kind of using the same, um, the same brush stroke 
or direction of fur that I used the first time. Um, but this time it's gonna, I'm using a little bit more white to make sure it's a little bit lighter and has these beautiful highlights on it. I do wanna make sure that it crosses, starts crossing over into the front of that ear too, um, because that's what it's gonna do. The, the, that forehead and head fur definitely is part of, you know, in front of that ear. So don't be afraid to, to put some in front of there. And then I'm just gonna kind of make sure it transitions over here into the side of the head. Um, and you don't wanna curve it too, too much. You don't want it to look like it falls down too, too much over there, but you need to get this, um, all areas to connect really i mean this the you know the fur on the whole head and and chest and body that all it all has to meet somewhere so as you're doing this just kind of in your head say okay well where does that piece of fur meet who does it belong to what section does should it kind of connect to and that can help you to um really kind of approach this in um in a logical kind of way. So I'm just gonna kind of continue. I do wanna make sure that even though I have this center section a little bit darker, that it still has some little bits of highlighted pieces on top of it so it's not too two-dimensional. I have that right-hand side that I need to hit as well. So I'm gonna just kind of keep adding some little, little lighter pieces in through here. And you can, again, have this as light or as dark as you want. The, um, the, again, they come in so many different color variations and some of them are so light and some of them are so rich and dark. So it's, you know, again, a, a visual preference. The, um, oh, they're so cute. I love it when I get to this stage, I've got the eyes on, I've got the little mouth. I feel like they should start talking to me or start making noises. I wonder what kind of noises foxes make. I don't know, do they bark like dogs? I don't know, I, maybe they like, I, I wanna say they like make these high yipey kind of, ah, I don't know, like little hyena noises. Like, I don't know, I'm not gonna attempt. I almost was gonna, I had it in my head like, what does it make? I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys kind of figure that part out, but I think, I don't know, I wish I knew what kind of noise it made. Hmm, oh well. I'll have to save that for another day, I guess. But um, we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got all your beautiful face fur on here, you can wash and dry. Mm, he's, looking, he's looking fancy now. You can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our ears with the final fluffy layer. So I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm gonna be using mostly white, but I'll also use probably a little brown, maybe a little rust, maybe a little yellow, whatever I'm feeling at that moment I'm gonna do. But I really want these to read as really light and fluffy with tons of little tiny um, pieces of fur that are kind of covering that dark center part. So I'm gonna start with white and a touch of brown on my brush at the same time. And I'm just gonna start doing kind of the same motion that I've been doing all along, um, only now I'm gonna be bringing those lighter pieces in a little bit further. Um, so they start to really kind of not cover 100%, but I definitely want them to um, cover. <laughs> Not 100% though. I want it to look like, you know, they're protecting the inside of that ear, but all the while still filtering the noises that this fox hears from like miles and miles away. And it is a curved kind of little fluffy fur here. And I've got more of the highlighted parts, um, you know, away from the edge of the ear, away from the exterior edge of the ear. Um, so, you can see I'm just kind of adding little bits and stuff in through here. I think I'm gonna add a little bit maybe of rust and yellow to my brush just to 
get this to blend in a little bit more. And again, you can have yours more white, more yellow, more rust, whatever works for you. I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit more at the top. I'm gonna to disguise this real black edge that I have on there because that was a little bit too bold for me. So now's the time that I'm gonna kind of um, disguise it if I, if I want to or lessen its intensity. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So if you have a real bold outline on the edge of your ear, now's the time to, to get that to kind of come to its final resting place and uh, disguise it as much as you want to. Sorry, I'm probably gonna go flipping back from one ear to another, which I don't mean to, but you know, when I see something, I have to act on it. And then I just reloaded my brush with a little bit more white and a touch of brown. And the key to making, you know, fur like this look more natural is it, it doesn't all have to go in exactly the same direction. So as you're doing this, if some of it, you know, goes up and some of it curves, that's what's going to make it look the most natural. Um, and I'm getting rid of any real firm lines that I had on those edges that might not look um, terribly natural and again I'm pulling this these little pieces in different directions so they almost look like they're laying over one another um, and that's gonna help and I'm also gonna make sure that it connects with the head so if there's any areas in that head that um, around the ear that need adjusting now's the time to do it so they look you know like they like they belong together and then once you've got your fluffy beautiful ears on here we are going to be hmm what are we going to do next let's use the same brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are finishing the muzzle area so this is going to be like the nose and these little um lighter pieces that are around um, this nose and the bridge of the nose. So I'm gonna use my medium brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are white, brown, rust, maybe a little bit of yellow. Um, in essence, all the colors I've already used on the face. But the trick is, is I really want, I, I, I'm going for a smooth transition from this muzzle area to the cheeks from the sides over here to this fluffy part. Um, I'm gonna be using a lot of dots. It's gonna be my primary brush stroke. Um, if I feel like any area of the muzzle needs to be widened or thinned out or you know any adjustment needs to be made, now's the time to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with some brown up in through here because I want the nose to look like it kind of dips in here, which we already have that started, um, but I really want it to make sure it reads as that and that this area in through here is a little bit more fuller. So we wanna make sure that this area in through here is darker. So I'm gonna start with some brown on my brush and I'm just really gonna kind of make some polka dots, but I don't want it to you know, fully take over the whole area that I've done, but I wanna make sure that I've got it um, blended on the sides with whatever is over in through here. So I'm just kind of lightly dotting that brown on there. I think I'm gonna put a tiny bit of rust as well because I wanna give it almost like this, I don't wanna call it a pinky look, but definitely a little bit lighter or a little bit, you know, redder of a tone. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white as I transition down towards the actual nose nose part. Um, and again, I, you're gonna see I'm probably gonna back up into a previous section just to make sure that I've got those dots or that soft fur really um, blended as much as I want it to be. Of course, now I'm going way, way up high, <laughs> but I'm seeing that I, I just want that to, to make sure that it looks like it belongs together. And now as I come down in through here, um, I do know that I've, I've got areas where whiskers are gonna be coming out on the sides of this uh, muzzle area. So I am gonna have 
make sure that the sides of this muzzle area stay kind of dark because that's where the whiskers are going to be coming out but i do want to make sure that this all makes sense so right now i'm just kind of dotting 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 my my sides of my nose i'm going back into some brown and rust to make sure that i've got a nice kind of dipped in shadowy area over here on the sides like I didn't get rid of it when I was um, you know previously dotting and then making sure that it transitions into the side um, little fur that's going to be coming over the, the lighter whiter pieces over on the side so again you don't need clean lines um, you just want it to look like it transitions from one piece into into the next in a in a way that kind of makes sense i think i'm going to put a little bit more white on um, these little areas in through here i know we did it before but i don't feel like it's light enough so i'm just popping in a little bit more lightness in through here and then i also am going to use this to um, the white um, on my brush to finish these little tiny pops of um, that little facial fur that is part of the, what I'm calling the muzzle, the muzzly area. So I'm just kind of using just white on my brush right now and kind of popping these little cute pieces out in through here. And again, they kind of overlap um, the, the darker fur in through here and you've got to get them to kind of blend in with the facial, facial fur. So they're, they're a little tricky kind of couple of pieces in through here but i'm sure you'll you'll work it out um and again i'm just making sure i've got these in through here that nose is looking pretty good i think i want maybe a, a little bit more color up in through here and again you can you know tweak it as as much as you as you want it to be tweaked, you can have it as light or as dark as you want. Some of the um, foxes, they, they have really brown noses. Some of them have really white noses. So really, um, however you uh, feel it looks good can work as long as you keep um, the separation between you know, your cheeks and, and that nose area. And then we are gonna switch brushes to our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this transition from your nose to your cheeks and your, your muzzly area, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing around our eyes. So I'm gonna be using my small brush um, the colors that I'm going to be using are mostly yellow, white, and brown, and black, and rust. <laughs> so um, all of my colors except for green and red. <laughs> so really what I'm doing is I'm adding all those little bits of special pieces around those eyes that are going to make them look really realistic. So I know that um, these type of foxes, they're going to have a little bit of light fur underneath their eyes, almost like eyelashes. Maybe they are eyelashes, but I don't think they just look like light fur. They've got almost like a little bit of light fur above their eyes, almost like a little eyelid. They've got deep, dark, um, almost like crevices coming out the corners and a real deep shadow in through here. So those are the things we've already kind of started them, but I want to accentuate them. So I'm going to start with a little bit of black and brown on my brush to get these little shadows to make a whole lot of sense in the corners of these eyes. So I'm just kind of rubbing in a little bit of black and brown. Again, we already kind of started it, but I want to make it so it doesn't look like it's a distinct line. So I'm going into where I originally started and then just kind of rubbing it in and making sure it just almost like fades into the sides of the nose. You can even pull it a little bit into the face if you want to. And then I'm gonna do the same thing kind of at the ends of these um, little, I don't know if they're called wrinkles maybe, little, little wrinkly. They're almost just like um, dips, I don't know. 
<laughs> maybe we'll call it dark fur. I don't know what it's really, if it's a dip or you know what it is, but I just want this to kind of blend in with the fur around it. So we have the mark there. Now it's time to just kind of blend it in a little bit with the, with the neighboring fur. And then what I'm gonna do is I don't want to travel black into my light color, so I'm just gonna um, wipe, wash and dry my brush a little bit, and I'm gonna put some lighter fur underneath my eyes and on my little eyelids. So I'm using rust yellow and white, and you can really elevate this to however light you want it to be. Um, and think of these almost as like little eyelashes. So I'm really just kind of making this little bright area underneath that eye. I think I want mine to be a little bit lighter. And you can really make this really prominent or really subtle. So however um, it's visually working for you is totally fine. And you can, you can tweak it. You can have a couple of lighter pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and do this little area over here. And again, just these, these little tiny subtle um, nuance kind of details really help to bring a lot of life to these particular you know sections of a portrait. Um, and we're doing a beautiful animal portrait today, but it's the same when you you know do your your own pets or a person or something. Just these little tiny bits of um, details really just help to to add that special something onto it. Um, and then I, I'm also gonna add a little light spot, which I didn't mention I was gonna do, but I'm, hold on, let me just fix my little my little boo-boo I just did there. Um, I'm gonna add a little tiny light spot into the corners of the eye. So you can go rust brown and white if you want to, just something a little bit lighter. And it, we'll call it the skin in the, in the corner of the eye. So I'm just putting a little kind of light mark right there in the, in the center of the black area. And then again, you could continue to tweak this all you want, but we got one more step to go on the face before we start with our beautiful leaves and stuff, and we're gonna do it with this small brush. So once you've got all of these little eye details on here, you can wash and dry this little brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting whiskers. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna use black paint. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna water down some black paint because I want these to be really skinny lines. So the only way that I'm gonna be able to do that is if I have very, almost like inconsistency paint. So I've got it really nice and thin and I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel or on the side of my palette. I'll spin my brush, I'll do whatever I gotta do to get a nice skinny line. And when I go to do these, I'm not gonna press hard. I'm gonna kinda go fast. Um, I don't wanna put them exactly in the same direction as my fur, cause I want you to be able to see them. Uh, they do come out kind of on the side of the face. They can come out, you know, in this little area in through here. Um, and they're not super long. So the fox's um, whiskers might, I don't think they're gonna, they don't come past here. So we're gonna give it a horribly whirl. So I'm gonna start somewhere in through here. I like to brace myself so I have kind of control on it. And I'm gonna just kind of start in through here and just kind of pull it out a little bit and pull it out a little bit. I've got a couple in the face. And then if you make them too um, dark or too big, you can always take your brush, put it in, wa uh, wash it, put it in a little bit of water. And while your whiskers are still wet, you can thin them out a little bit, or you can take a little bit of white paint and use that as um, an element that can make them look skinnier. So if you put white paint on your brush, you can just do a little line right next to them or on top of them, and that'll make them look a little bit less prominent. So there's a couple of tricks, or just use a super duper skinny brush, whatever um, works for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple on the other side, just make myself a little, couple of little 
lighter dots in through there so they don't look like they're too prominent. And then I'll do the same thing over on the right hand side and just kind of pull them out. They can cross over one another. They can, you know, be as many as you want, come out in little different directions. And then again, if you have some that are too thick, just white, uh, put a little water on your brush and you can either thin them out that way or you can take a touch of water, I mean uh, white paint, and that will help to thin them out that way as well. And then we're gonna switch brushes to our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your whiskers on here, you can put this tiny brush away in your water cup, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are creating some branches for our autumn leaves. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using black and brown. And if you want, you can use some rust too and just have fun. I'm just gonna kind of free form some um, branches coming off of the sides and from the bottom. I'm really not terribly concerned um, what these look like. All I'm really doing is adding an extra kind of under uh, element for my leaves so my leaves will look less um, two-dimensional. This will give this will put them right out there in nature's um, nature's fortress. You can put some in front of your fox as well and I'm gonna maybe put a branch, like the foxes maybe just kind of peeking out from behind the forest. You can have, again, as many of these as you want. I think I'm gonna put a couple just kind of coming off in, in front of him like this. Ooh, I just called it a he. I didn't know if it was gonna be a he or a she, but I guess now, since I've called it a he, that's what I've designated it to be. All right, and I think I think that's pretty cool. And again, I'm not terribly concerned about, you know, these coming in any particular direction. And then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got some, you know, free form kind of branches, you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm painting my autumn leaves. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are brown, rust, red, green, yellow, and white. Um, and how I'm gonna kind of tackle this is I'm gonna go from dark to light. So I'm gonna be using brown and red as my first kind of pass on a lot of these leaves. So that will add almost like a really nice dark shadowy kind of layer to them. And then I'll do a second pass with um, more yellows and whites and greens and all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm gonna put some red and brown on my brush and I'm gonna show you a couple of simple shapes um, that will give the impression that these are some nice big autumn leaves that are just turning turning some great colors. So the way that I like to do this particular type of leaf is I'm gonna kinda of have like a center point and then I have a couple of additional pieces that, that come off of it. Um, and it, you don't have to have any specific number, um, whatever visually works for you. And then I just kind of put a couple of pieces coming off of each one of those, what I'll refer to as kind of, st not stems, but um, pointy parts of your leaf. And again, I this is representational of maybe a, a maple kind of leaf, but Really, there's so many different types of leaves out there. You could do them more pointy if you wanted to or with less points, whatever really works for you. But I like to use the multiple colors on my brush because that's going to um, allow it to look more realistic. Like maybe you're seeing kind of the veins um, in it or something and you don't always have to see it from the front maybe you see it from the side and I'm just going to kind of go about this I'm going to have a whole bunch in different areas and they don't all have to have as much detail as you know the first one that you did you can really just you know do a few that have some pretty firm detail to them and then maybe 
the rest of them are just almost representational and you're almost just adding little colors to them and giving, you know, some kind of shape, but maybe not, you know, a full on shape to it. So again, I'm still just kind of using some rust and brown to get the party started. I am going to have a lot. Um, I want a lot of this reddish kind of color in through here. I think it really complements the, the fox well. Um, so I'm starting to add big pieces of um, these reds and browns. And again, this is kind of just my, my first layer. And as, um, as I work through this, you can see sometimes I'm just making little marks, um, but I really want a lot of this red to be represented. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got plenty of it on here. And then at, when I go to do the second layer, I'll be using more of just the red. So that will um, that will make it pop even more. But I love using the, the brown with it because it adds such a great dimensional element to it. Um, and you could, I suppose, in these darker areas, if you wanted to use a little more black, you could certainly go ahead and do that. But right now I'm still just kind of using my, my red and brown and I'm really just having fun with some of these um, directions of these leaves. Again, they don't all have to be the same. I'm gonna have some that are gonna cross over one another, but in a minute, I'm gonna start to just make some marks, <laughs> some red little marks, red and brown kind of marks. These are gonna help to just add to my story here. And I think that's pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna start to add yellow and green. Um, if you want, you could even pre-mix yourself an orange. Um, I can take my, I can take a little red and some of my yellow and I could pre-mix an orange if I wanted to. So that's totally on the table for you to do. Um, whatever autumn colors that you want to incorporate into your beautiful, you know, fall fox painting, you can certainly do so. So now once I've got um, you know, my desired colors, maybe I start to add a couple of more representational leaves. Um, you can certainly add them on top of one another. Um, if you find as you're going through this process that you um, are working through wet paint that is not really working for you, you can certainly dry your canvas in between these layers. I just added some yellow and white, which I'm totally digging. So I'm going in on the yellow and white right now. And again, you can certainly add leaves in front of other ones. Just have fun. Um, in a minute, once I've, once I've got some of, oh, I like the, sometimes when I'm doing this, this is why I paint because I go into these moments where it's like, oh my God, I'm having so much fun. And this is one of those. Once I start adding these brighter colors and I'm gonna, I just added some green and yellow to my brush, green, yellow, and white. And you can see this is just, this is, this is why I do what I do. I kind of want to dance a little bit right now, but um, I will refrain because you definitely don't want to see me dance. Or, and you don't want to hear me sing either. Those two things are things I really enjoy doing, but I need to do them in private because nobody, <laughs> you want to watch me paint. You don't want to watch me sing and dance. And then of course you can see, oh yeah, I like this yellow. Um, I'm just kind of making these little marks everywhere. I think I'm gonna start using a little green, yellow, and white, and maybe start adding some super fun stuff in through here. Yeah, and then mm, I'm digging that. Maybe a little green in front of my fox here. And maybe these are just regular leaves that you know haven't turned yet. Maybe they're long pieces of grass. Who knows? You just you just make those marks and make it however festive and fall you want it to be. And then I'm gonna add maybe some, wow, I'm having so much fun. Um, I'm gonna add some more red on top of my red and brown now. And that's probably gonna be my my final little my final little touch here. Um, maybe it might end up with a little red and 
and white or red and yellow but right now I just added some heavy red to my brush and you can see I'm just kind of highlighting with this vibrant red and I'm loading on my paint oh my god I'm having so much fun um, onto the darker reddish um, leaves that I had initially put on there with the red and the brown so now the second layer of this bright red is just it's just making them pop. It's they're, they're popping right off my canvas right now with some beautiful texture and highlights. And if I wanted to add some yellow, I could do that too. But I am so digging these red leaves. I want, I want them to be splattered all over the world. <laughs> um, I'm going to actually call it, I think, because I'm just digging how much I like them, so uh, that's that's probably going to do it for me. I have one tiny little step to go, and it's going to be with my small brush. So once you've got all of your beautiful fall leaves on your canvas, you can um, put this medium brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm doing the final step, which is the final step to any painting, which is to sign it. So I'm going to use my small brush and I'm going to be using black paint. I'm going to sign mine in the bottom left. You could certainly sign yours wherever you want to. I'm using black. I might have already said that. Um, you could use any color. You could sign your first name. You could sign the date. You could put a symbol. Whatever works for you is totally fine by me. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself such a pretty little fox. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.